to a place where he will not provide for you. And they want to go around and be what I call Jesus cops. Oh, yeah. And they're going to just bust everybody in the name of Jesus. It's about the very God of heaven liking me and me having a relationship with this God. They didn't see it come to fruition themselves, but they knew it was going to happen. We're going to do a series on the book of James. The book of James is one of my favorite. It's probably my absolute favorite book of the Bible. Now, if you don't like being told what to do by God, you're going to hate this series. In this particular book, God doesn't ask you to do something. He doesn't ask you for your favor. He doesn't ask, um, which way would you choose? There are over 50 imperatives in this book. And most of them go like this. Get off your butt and do something. The name of this series is Shut Up and Grow Up. Shut up and grow up. You know what that means really is if we do all the talking we'll never be able to listen to God. If we're doing all the say-so and we have the word and we're blah, blah, blah this or we're moping and we're complaining and we're whining and we're miserable and we just want to be just miserable, miserable, miserable. I read something this very day. About 69% of Americans are under happy or miserable. Now I'm wondering why. Is it because we have delivery service? Is it because I get a drive from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean without anybody bothering me or stopping me at a border? Is that why I'm miserable? Am I miserable because I have the ability to live anywhere in this country I want? I can go to a big city with thousands of choices among restaurants, cuisine from all over the world. Is that why I'm miserable? Am I miserable because I get air conditioned in the freaking summer and I get heat in the winter? Is that, you know, that has got to be the reason I am miserable. We are so blessed, and we are so miserable. And I have come to know in these 21 years of ministry from the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you're miserable in your life, because you don't know him, you don't listen to him, you spend too much time talking and whining, you need to shut up and grow up. It's time for us to start listening to the voice of God. Are you miserable because Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago and God placed all his anger and his retribution on Jesus and set you free? Is that why you're miserable? Are you miserable because Jesus took your beating, your pelting, your pounding? Is that why you're miserable? I'll tell you why you're miserable. If you're miserable. You're miserable because all you think about is you and nothing else. Jesus promises great joy in his scripture. And we're going to see that next week. My brothers count it all joy when life sucks. You can't have a joyful life in the middle of a sucky event unless you are focusing on Jesus. Guys, this series, James, is a, a tough one. And I'm even cussing in the Vondren home here, ain't I? Yeah. Just shut up. We don't say that over there. Remember that time when Bondo come home and we had Faith meet Mama at the door? They said, Mama, Daddy's said a bad word and she used some of her own. What'd he say, honey? He said, shut up. That was a funny one, Bondo. But this is for the adults. Shut up and grow up. You know, I've been in ministry for 21 years. I've been doing this particular ministry for seven years. And there are people even in this ministry. We are a ministry who God has led us to the place to where we want to drop all garbage, all po political insanities, all legalism, and say it's Jesus. 
It's Jesus. Listen to his voice. Do not harden your heart as in the day of provocation, but listen to him. Listen to him. Let him lead you. Let him be your guide. Let the Holy Spirit be your friend. Do what he says. Go where he says go. Stop when he says stop. Grow up when he says grow up. And I've been preaching that message for seven years here in this ministry. And some people who have been coming here for a long time have not grown one iota. And I scream and I beg and I pray and I confess, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts. Open our ears to your truth. We want you to be true. I challenge us to go home and read the Bible. Read the Word. Know the Scripture for seven years. And still get people that get so upset. Because <laughs> I just don't flip the egg right or something. Guys, you need to shut up and grow up. You need to start reading the Bible. You need to start listening to the preaching. If you're going to sit here in the midst, right here, and if you're going to keep listening to us on TV right now, or whatever you're listening to us on, you need to do what the Scripture says. And we're going to see this in a couple weeks. Be doers of the Word, and not just hearers. My challenge to you is don't you sit here and let this 26 minutes go to pot. You listen to the Word. You listen to the Lord. You go home, you leave here, you compare to what was said tonight to the, your own Bible reading. You get into it for yourself. We just heard Vondo confess the truth tonight. About how reading the Word really does change one's position, their perception, their situation. See, the situation doesn't change. You're still going to be in this situation. But through the scriptures, God lets you, us see it from his side. His point of view, his perspective. And what a perspective that is. And guys, my challenge to you is don't sit here on your blessed assurance tonight and walk out there and be one of the miserables. Miserable. James comes at us and he comes at us full force and he ain't playing. But he is a saying. And he says, now it's time to listen. It's time not only to listen, it's time to do what you know to do once you've heard. Whew. We ain't even started the first verse yet. The Bible says in James 1.1, 1, 1, James. Who was that guy? There's five different James in the Bible that we know of. James is the New Testament word for the Old Testament, Jacob. Just like Jesus is the New Testament word for the Old Testament word, Joshua. They mean the same thing. The first Old Testament word is a Hebrew word. And the New Testament word is either Aramaic or Greek word. And the word James is the same thing as Jacob. Who was this James? There's five of them. Uh, we're not even going to talk about the other four. This is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in two passages, John and Mark, that he had brothers, five. He had at least two sisters, plural, his sisters also. One of the brothers named was James. The Bible tells us also that James was there. It's obvious that he was there listening to Jesus talk a lot and share his scriptures. I don't know how much younger James was than Jesus. We know that Jesus was the firstborn. Mary was the espoused virgin, espoused to her husband Joseph. And the angel of the Lord came upon her. The Holy Spirit gave her seed of child inside of her, our Jesus Christ, our Lord, the very God of heaven, who vehicled himself to our earth by way of a birth canal through a human fleshly womb, through a wonderful woman that God blessed and reached out to, who was probably a 14-year-old, 15-year-old maiden. She was a virgin at the time and Jesus was the firstborn. Then he had at least seven other siblings after that. Do not believe lies of people's tradition. Read scripture and you will know that he had physical brothers and sisters. Mary, his mother, did not remain a perpetual virgin. But remember the story when Jesus walked down with his parents down to the synagogue at age 12. And it was time to go down to Jerusalem and worship. Man, it was time. Worship was on. Let's go to the temple and pray. Let's go do our Jewish rituals. Let's just celebrate God, Jehovah. 
they all went down there and they all did their own things. And after temple session closed, apparently the family and everybody left and they, they went off to you know buy goods and have a good time, do some shopping in town. Jesus stayed right there with the teachers, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. And he began to astound them with his questions and he even more astounded them with his answers. At age 12, I don't know where James, his half-brother, was this whole time. But I know that James grew up with this Jesus. And James knew this Jesus was different. Because when James and the other siblings wanted to go out and do wrong and blow up mailboxes with firecrackers, Jesus Christ wasn't around doing that. That would have been kind of rough to have him for a brother in a household, wouldn't it? Knowing everything, knowing truth. But the cool thing about him was he suppressed all that. And nobody knew who he was. And he, the Bible says the way he knew scripture is not because he came here and was God. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. I'm God, I know everything. Ask me a question. It wasn't that. Jesus knew what he knew at age 12 is because he listened to his mother and father and the people in the synagogue when they teach the scriptures. And the Bible says in Luke 2.52 that the child, Jesus Christ, grew in wisdom and in stature with fa favor with God and men. And he grew in his knowledge in wisdom. What Jesus knew on this planet as a man, he learned it as a man. Listening to the Holy Spirit. That's why it was so vital for him to leave where he was and go pray every night and listen to the voice of God. Because he made himself a man yielded to the Holy Spirit of God. Not my will, but yours be done. And he didn't come as super God. He came as a man, humbled man, and he grew up in this home with Joseph and Mary and the siblings. And they saw this thing happen at age 12. And I'm sure something else happened at age 13 and 14 and 15 and 16 and 17 and 18. And Jesus didn't even start his Christian ministry until age 30. But these guys, James and the brothers and sisters, saw a consistent Jesus Christ. He wasn't called Christ at the time, just Yeshua, not Yeshua HaMashiach. He was just Jesus. Hey, salvation, get over here. Joshua, get over here. Come on, salvation. And they called him salvation every day that they lived. They knew what the word Jesus meant. They knew what their name meant. Supplanter, trickster, traitor. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Prince with God. James was named this old name of Jacob. And they watched this Jesus. And they liked what he said. They agreed with what he said. They were cool with what he said. But John chapter 7 says Jesus said something one day that blew their minds and they thought he was beside himself. They thought he had finally flipped it and gone loony toony because he confessed himself to be God. And they didn't believe. And they wouldn't believe. And they had a family meeting to put Jesus away in a nut house because he was beside himself. They were going to allow him to go up to Jerusalem. They said, man, you flipped your wig, bro. You're nuts. We need, need to have an intervention. And they thought he was nuts. And I love our Lord Jesus. He continued his ministry and many people left at that point. He had massive crowds following him as long as he was serving fish sandwiches. Hey, here's fish. Here's biscuits from a little boy's lunch. Here you go. Oh, you got to come see this guy. And they all came out and he would heal. He would raise the dead. He would heal the sick. He, he'd cleanse the leper. And he would do all sorts of wonderful miracles and wonderful works. And as long as he was doing that, people followed. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, happy, clappy, happy, clappy. Then one day he stood up and he said, the reason I can do all this is because I'm God. And many of his followers quit following. And Jesus looked over to his disciples and said, will you also go away? Peter said, Jesus, where, where are we going? Uh, we have nowhere to go. We've sold all and given everything away to follow you. We got rid of our careers, got rid of everything. You're all we have. What a wonderful confession. When Peter was saying that, he had no idea that Acts chapter 2 was coming up. He had no idea that God was going to be using him as a big spokesman for all of Christianity when this Holy Spirit descended on everybody, not just on Jesus. What a privilege. But Peter made a confession in a dark hour because he had listened to the word of his master. And then when his master added a new word, 
the Holy Spirit worked in their hearts, on their hearts, upon their heads, and revealed it unto him. Remember the confession. Some people say I'm so-and-so. Some people say I'm this other guy. Some people say I'm Elijah. Whom say ye that I am? And Peter said, Thou art Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said it. Jesus said, You know what? No man revealed that to you. He said, The Holy Spirit gave that to you. And when somebody says this, Jesus is God. And if you're turned off by it, the Holy Spirit's not at work in your life. But if you're turned on by it and you believe and you know that he's the very son of God, he who was in heaven left there and came here. The word became flesh. And you believe that and it excites you, the Holy Spirit has turned you onto his truth. And James wouldn't listen to that truth when his half-brother Jesus said, I am God. But Jesus didn't say, okay, I'm going to show you I'm going to show you. I'm going to die on a cross. I'm going to take a beating. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to beat you with a broomstick until you believe. He didn't do that. But what, what he did do is after he died on that cross, rose from the grave, one of the first people the scripture tells us that he went to go see was James. Now you picture you. Before the New Testament is written, the temple's still standing, all the Jews are going there, serving, 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 serving. And a faction of these Jews start following this marauder, this traveling preacher named Jesus. Big crowd. The Jews hate it because they took some of their congregation from them. Because they're filled with numbers, just like many of the churches here in the Bible Belt in the United States of America. Numbers mean nothing without spirits and hearts involved. You can always bump your head and get swelling. Just because the numbers are there doesn't mean the Spirit of God is there. Right. And they were mad at Jesus because he took a big faction of their crowd. But a bunch of them came back when he said, I'm God. But there was still a group out here following him. And Jesus come to town and he'd preach a truth and it would tick the religious people off. Because they wouldn't listen to God. If the Word of God, just the Word of God itself ticks you off or makes you mad you got a heart problem big time not, not preaching just what the scripture really truly says if that makes you mad you got a heart problem but if it's the way it's presented to you hell fire damnation you're screwed blah, 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 it's a heart problem with the preacher who needs to get his heart right because the purpose of all scripture is to draw men to Jesus. He said, man, if I am lifted up in your preaching and not Satan. So many people, the devil wants to do this to you and the devil wants to pound you down and the devil's after you. You know, these things are true because Jesus, it was told us in the New Testament, he inspired it. It said, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Doesn't mean he's going to devour you. What do lions do? They look for the weak. They look for those who aren't mature. Shut up and grow up. It's time to mature in our Christianity. James, this half-brother of Jesus, didn't believe, didn't believe. Jesus comes back to him after the resurrection. Can you imagine how your past would click? Ding, 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 ding. All the episodes you saw Jesus do. All the things you heard him say. The things that he said about himself. All this stuff. And you saw him die brutally. You saw a soldier take a spear and shove it up in his heart. Pull it out. And see blood and water flow from it. Oh, he is definitely dead. And three days later, you got him talking to you on your front porch. He says, I love you, James. Things would click at that point, I believe, if you're listening to the Lord. See, it's obvious that James had a pure heart. He just wouldn't accept all of God's truth concerning Jesus. And the Bible says that he, if you won't confess that Jesus is the Christ, you are not in God. Jesus, if Jesus is not in you, you are not in God. That's heavy. But that's scripture. It's all about Jesus. That's the whole battle on this planet religiously. It's Jesus or not. 
And everybody who's not in Jesus gets mad because the Jesus Bible says he is the only way. He is the only truth. He's the only life. And nobody can get to God except through this one fella named Jesus. And when Jesus was saying that himself, because Jesus said it while he was living, John 14, 6, I am the way. I am the truth, Jesus said, and I am the life. James hearing that wouldn't accept it. But when Jesus stood there on James' front porch that morning after he saw Jesus die, and there's Jesus, and he's all got his wounds showing, we know that he still had a hole in his side because we know that after he appeared to Doubting Thomas, he said, thrust hither your hand into my side. It wasn't a scar. Never get your doctrine from a postcard or painting. Never get your doctrine from a cartoon, even though it's a Jesus cartoon. Do not get your doctrine from an anti-Semitic director who claims he knows a lot about Jesus. Get your doctrine from the scripture itself. For the Holy Spirit is the true teacher, and doctrine means teaching. And the only way to get true teaching is from a true teacher, and the Holy Spirit is this teacher. Boy, it came to James that day and he believed. And all of a sudden, his immaturity about this one named Jesus, it went from, it grew this deep against, 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 against. He says this about himself. He's a fool. He's beside himself. He's a nut. He's a whack job. We need to intervene. Oh, man, what is he saying? Oh, man, I know Jewish history. We were brought up by mom and dad. We were brought up in the synagogue. I know all about the law of Moses. And this guy, he keeps saying stuff that doesn't agree, doesn't agree, doesn't agree. And finally, one day, when it was like this, and Jesus died like this, and he came back like this, this went to this and he exploded in belief and that's why we see in Acts 15 this James being the entire leader of the church of Jerusalem from being a major doubter to a believer why because he finally believed and when you believe the things that Jesus has said about himself you will mature not only when you believe them but when you be a doer of the things he said to do. It's said about this guy, not in scripture, but in history, that his nickname was Camel Knees because he prayed so often. He calloused up his knees like an old camel when they sit down. You'll see that a lot in this book as we go on, his emphasis on praying and prayer because we've got to get connected with the Lord. God not only just wants to speak to us, he gives us the opportunity to speak back. What do we speak? We speak the word of the Lord back to him in faith. The Bible doesn't say it, but history does. That in AD 62, this man was preaching and his preaching was so hard that the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, hated him. And they finally had enough of what he was saying and how he was turning Jerusalem upside down against, against their system. And they took him to the top of the temple and they threw him off the temple and he hit the cobblestone, boom, 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 below. And he was still breathing a little bit. And then the priest came up and beat him with clubs to death. Do you believe in Jesus that much? Are you willing to take a bullet? You will to have somebody embarrass you and hurt your feelings. <laughs> Shut up and grow up. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't introduce himself as, yo, yo, I'm James. Jesus, my bro, yo. Yeah, I got, I'm high powered. I'm high powered. You got to know who my brother was. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? He said this, my name's James. I serve this guy who called himself my brother. I serve him. I love him. He is my king. He's everything that is. And this man, he was able to grow so greatly, so quickly, because he turned up his misbeliefs into automatic beliefs, and God propelled him to a place. 
And when he took that law that he knew concerning Moses and concerning Abraham and concerning everything else, and it was all placed in Jesus Christ, his maturity level went. And the problem in the Christian church today is we don't know anything about Moses or Aaron or Abraham or anything, any old Bible stories to make the New Testament come a real. And we don't even know the New Testament enough to make Jesus become alive in our lives, give us a passion that makes us explode on the scene for God and change the world. I'm talking about Green County. Change in Green County. Change in Craighead County. Change in Independence County for the Lord Jesus Christ. Just because you exist and you believe and because you're a servant of Jesus Christ. Servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. He called his brother Lord. Oh, but I'm writing to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. You see, just before James was thrown off the temple and beat to death with clubs, that same church faction led by Paul was going out and killing Christians. Killing them, wiping them out, clubbing them, killing the babies, doing everything, just creating a scene of just fear. It forced a lot of the Christians who were Jews to leave. James said, I'm James. I'm a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm writing to all you people who's been in the middle of troubles, been hurt, been chased away from your homes because of what you believe. He says, I'm about to write the rest of this letter to encourage you, to sharpen you, to help you, if you'll only listen to the words herein. And he says, before I start, I just want to say hello. Greetings. I love you. Hey, guys, I really want to thank you for being a part of the program today. I'll tell you what, we'd like to invite you to come anytime you wish to. We are C4 Ministries, a small ministry here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Our address is 505 Brandon Drive. And our phone number is here at the bottom of the screen. If you want to call us, just tell us what's on your heart, prayer requests, whatever. Give us an attaboy. We'd appreciate that. The number is 870 870- 974-9988. Also at the same time, we are without a worship leader. Our style of worship, what we're wanting to do is a soul, bluesy, rock type of a sound. If you are that person can play guitar and lead a group of individuals who are willing to do that, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call again at the number below your screen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.